Thank you for staying with us. So I was just saying that we're very big on health in Wishu. We've spoken about oral health, water, kidney. We've spoken even about the doctors, Jack Wang from Nigeria. So I mean, why won't we talk about the heart? A very vital organ. Very important, actually. <laughs> so your heart is a very vital organ and it's a muscle that pumps blood to all parts of your body. The blood pumped by your heart provides your body with the oxygen and nutrients it needs to function. Maintaining a healthy heart is crucial to leading a healthy life, yet heart disease remains the leading cause of death worldwide. In Nigeria, heart disease is no exception, affecting many individuals each year, but there are steps you can take and lifestyle changes you can make to minimize your risk of cardiovascular disease and improve your heart health. Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS on WhatsApp too. 081 You could also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa, one with the hashtag Wayshow. Mary, what lifestyle um, changes are you making to maintain a healthy heart? Well, actually, I know you go to the gym before you before you put that in mind because you have asked me now, Chinedo, when are you resuming the gym? I know you go to the gym, which is a very good thing, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm listening to you. Go on. So, what else do I do? Yeah. Um, I'm currently trying to adjust my, what's it called? Diet. Diet. Mm. Um, I want to infuse more protein. Mm. Protein? Protein? I don't know <laughs> which one it is. I don't know if that necessarily helps, but I mean, that's what I'm doing. I mean, that's why I have an expert I'm, today, right? Yeah, so um, I also noticed, because when I don't go to the gym, I'm trying to run. So, mm. and I'm really, I really want to get better at that. So I think running helps with that mm. as well. I, I really miss the gym a whole lot, a whole lot. Please I come feel, back. I will, I will. Please. I'll come back next week. I'll be back. I, I feel so bad <laughs> that I haven't, I haven't, I feel very unfit. So now I've noticed I'm a very agile person, right? Mm -hmm. So I can walk, I can take very long walks, right? And people are always very surprised because maybe my body size and people expect that I cannot run, and so, right? <laughs> which is very funny to me because why are you judging me, right? But I can run and without losing my breath. But mm. these days I notice that it's difficult for me to take such long walks. I get so tired. Amazing. Even through the day, usually if I go to the gym mm. in the mornings, I can get on my and I'm just... On like end. that, right? I have that ginger that even helps my mental health as well. It puts me in a very good place. And I noticed that since I stopped, all of that has just been dwindling. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I think it is time. And you've gingered me again this evening. So I think come back, come really back. and truly. Come back. But you know, I have very burning questions about the heart because when I, I was actually reading about the heart earlier today and i discovered very interesting things so i'm happy that we have an expert in the building with us today and she's no other person than dr monisola daniger dr monisola daniger is the co-founder of navin healthcare and navin technology services lagos nigeria with medical experience spanning over 20 years dr daniger built her pathway in medicine and cardiology working in the public sector where she got to the peak of her civil service career as well as reputable, reputable medical centers and hospitals in various capacities. Dr. Danger is the co-founder of Navin Healthcare and Navin Technology Services, Lagos, Nigeria. Her passion for preventive cardiology led her to convene the Navin Healthcare 10,000 Hearts Project in order to help individuals detect, protect, and correct cardiovascular diseases. She also teaches corporate heart health and workplace wellness and productivity workshops to improve staff health and productivity while reducing mortality from heart disease. And she's with us live in the studio, the very beautiful. <laughs> Dr. Adrian, we're pleased to have you in the studio today. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you so Thank much you. for having me. Yeah. Okay. And we can't Thank wait you. to ask you questions about <laughs> okay. yeah. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so, I mean, I was saying that I noticed that um, when I stopped exercising, mm -hmm. I became lazy actually and very laid back. I, I get tired very easily. And does that have anything to what, what, what starts? What's going on there? Okay, so it's what we call deconditioning. Mm. So when you exercise, you condition your body to get used to working out. So once you stop, your body also. I don't want to use the word stop. Your body also gets, should I say, lazy or tired. Mm -hmm. And then it just doesn't want to move until you now decide mm -hmm. it has to move by force. Okay. So you need to go back to the gym. So, See, don't so we have to gym. Go. So we have to gym all our life. Well, you don't need to go to the gym to be active. 
So, you know, you can walk, mm. you can run, you can swim, you can play tennis, you can skip. There's so many things as long as you're not sitting down for more than yeah. two hours in a day uh. at a time. So ideally, every two hours, you need to stand up and walk around. Okay. And then you need to take a block time of 30 to 45 minutes every day to actually exercise. So gyms are, you, gyms are great, exactly. but you can walk, mm. you can dance, you can do house chores, you can swim, you can skip, you can play with your children, soccer, roll on the floor. Just be active mm. for 30 to 45 minutes every day and then every two hours you must get up from your seat and move around for like five minutes hmm. okay so point one every two hours you must get up from your seat that's that's quite i would say difficult right actually if you work in an office right because you know sometimes you're under so much pressure you have deadlines you have mm -hmm. deliverables and then you're just there sometimes it's you you even find it difficult to get up to have lunch mm -hmm. because you are just tied down to do whatever it is that you want to do so I think, it's, I think you just have to be intentional about it when you decide that's what you want to do. Mm. If you own all these smart watches, yeah. Yeah. many of them tell that's you to stand up at Apple certain times. Nine. Exactly. So you don't have to do anything major. Just get up, walk to the door and come back. Mm. Or take your phone calls while standing. Right. Or you don't always have to send an email to your colleague. You can just pop in, oh, hello, can <laughs> I get the, this yeah. or that? And then, you know, just walk, just be more active. That's basically it. Mm. Okay. Interesting. So let's come to diets now, because mm. I, from the little I know, mm. I know that diets is um, a major contributing factor to um, the health, healthy state of the heart. Right? Mm. Um, do you are there any particular diets that we should be on to okay. make sure that we maintain a healthy heart? First of all, I don't like the word diet. <laughs> Thank diet, diet. You. When you say Thank diet, you. it connotes restriction yeah. and suffering <laughs> and punishment yeah. mm -hmm. and pain. Mm. So I just I like using the word lifestyle change. Mm. Just change the way you eat. And then diet is not just about what you eat. It's about what you consume in general. So what yeah. you eat as per food, what you consume as per recreation, alcohol, drugs, mm. Mm. you know, what you're smoking, what you're swallowing, what you're eating because people eat drugs these days. And also what you consume as per your mental health, the news you listen to, the people yeah. you surround yourself with. So everything is part of your diet. So talking about food, the best kind of food for, for a good heart is food that grows from the ground. People always ask me that question. <laughs> Not food that comes oh, in a pack. Yeah. So if you think about it, what grows from the ground? Fruits grow from the ground. Mm, vegetables, vegetables grow from the ground. You know, those are the core of your diet. Of course, you need carbohydrates mm -hmm. for your brain function to give you energy. Then you need protein to build your bones, so to build your muscles and things like that. You need your vitamins and your minerals, you know, for your hormones and your well-being, your skin and things like that. Now, when you start removing food groups in bulk from your diet, then it's, there's going to be a problem. Like when you say, okay, you want to go off carbohydrates, for example, then your brain suffers because your brain can only use glucose for energy. Uh. When you say you want to remove fat, for, fat is extremely important because yeah. some hormones are made from fat. You know, some body processes need fat, Fast. fatty acids to yeah. be able to, you know, to go on. So that's basically it. Food that grows from the ground is the core and then your other nutrients like your carbs, your fats, your, um, your protein as well. And water, obviously. Of course, water. Okay, so when we talk about protein, right, I hear some people say, for example, I'll use my dad as an example. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to hear that you are eating frozen chicken or frozen turkey or, you know, <clears throat> he wants, okay, kill the meat there and then and then make it or the fish or whatever mm -hmm. it is. He wants it fresh and he'll tell you it's because he wants us to have a healthy heart, cholesterol and, you know, all of that and mm. personally i don't like live chicken i don't like honestly i, I feel like it's just too f the blood is just too fresh i don't <laughs> like it <laughs> so we have a problem in my in, with my family right mm -hmm. because 
when they do that and then they cook still with it, I'm not able to eat it because I can literally taste mm. the chicken in it. So I don't like it, right? right. So I'd rather eat fish or have them make something with fish since mm -hmm. we shouldn't eat frozen food. So does that have anything to do with what does that mm. affect the heart in any way? No. The only concern we may have about frozen food, especially those that are imported, is preservatives. Okay. But if you buy your chicken and you freeze it, mm. you know, like we normally do, and then you cook it three, four, five weeks after, it should be fine. So protein is protein, but the only issue with this imported frozen food is preservatives. But not that the freezing process does anything mm. bad to the heart. No, that, that's not true. Right, okay. So I, I'm thinking that's the same thing for, for canned foods as well, because I remember mm. you said earlier that we should eat. So canned food is different. Ah, okay. So when you want to preserve food, by canning, mm -hmm. they generally add a lot of salt to it. Think of any canned food you know, it's almost always salty. Mm -hmm. I don't want to name names, but yeah. think about it, the canned beef, the canned fish, the canned, you know, so they add salt to preserve it. Mm. Sometimes they add oil or they add fat mm. to improve the taste and also to preserve it. So that's the issue with canned food. So it's better you eat your beef from the cow, whether fresh, freshly slaughtered or whatever, or slaughtered and then frozen mm. and then you eat that instead of buying food in a can or in a packet yeah i, I agree with you because personally i would also rather for example if i won't have minced meats right i'll go to the butchery and then exactly make sure that and they, they mince it right there for yes, you yes and, mm -hmm. and then I, instead of buying the packed or the canned mm -hmm. um minced meats you said something about oil mm -hmm. right are there any particular kinds of oil that are healthier than the others well you see, when you say healthy oil, people tend to think you can have unlimited quantities of oil once they say it's healthy. Mm. Now, oil is oil. You can, mm. you can make you add weight if you eat too much. Now, there's some oils that are healthier than others, mm. mostly plant-based oils. So the olive oils, your soya oils, your, you know, those oils are better than animal fat, obviously, because obviously okay. they are much better. So, and then our normal oils we eat in Nigeria, palm oil is good. But the problem with palm oil is when you now bleach palm oil, you now turn it into something else. You now increase the trans fat content of the oil. Okay. And that's why you shouldn't really bleach your palm oil. You should try and eat it as close to raw as possible. So how do we eat the father? Well, <laughs> <laughs> that would be a problem. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, that's, you have to bleach the oil to make it what it is. Well, right? I suggest you don't eat it too often. Yeah, um, okay. But if you're diagnosed with having high cholesterol, then you may need to look at that. Okay. Mary. Okay. I think I have yeah, about three questions. Okay. The first one would be, um, what happens when you, sometimes when I'm running, my mind wants to go further, mm. but my heartbeat is already like probably very high or something. So mm -hmm. I keep, I keep thinking to myself, how do I, is that I control the pace? Do I stop and continue, or like, in um, I don't, I think I don't know really how to explain it, but okay, if um, you want to go for that, but mm -hmm. your body is telling you to hold on, yeah. So first of all, when you're exercising, you need to listen to your body. It's extremely important. Okay, mm -hmm. your heart rate should go up when you exercise. If not, that's a different disease on its own. <laughs> so your heart rate should go up. Okay, okay. and. When your body is telling you to stop, you may need to listen. Okay. Because the body is like a supercomputer. It thinks for you. Mm. So if your body is telling you slow down, you may need to and then maybe pick up the pace later. Because while we're trying to be healthy and while we're trying to improve our heart health, we still need to be safe because safety is important. So okay. when that happens, then obviously you need to slow down. Um, okay, another question would be for panic attacks. What would be, um, what would I say, a solution or how to, you know, come out of it? Because there's increased heart rate, um, sometimes not as noticeable as, you know, you, mm -hmm. but you can tell that something is going yeah. on. So what would you say would be like mm -hmm. a, a fix at that point? I know you take a break, but, mm -hmm. you know... Okay, so I've had a lot of patients refer to me, especially young females okay. with features of heart disease. Okay. So they have palpitations, they start to sweat, oh my God, my chest is paining me. And then when you now take a history, you now realize that, you know, this person doesn't have heart disease because heart disease doesn't just drop 
okay. on someone, mm. there's usually something the that process, starts first. Okay. So there's usually like a predisposing factor or two or more. So most of the time in these people, when they have these panic attacks, they have, like you said, palpitation, their heart starts to race. They can't breathe. It's like they don't get enough air. So first of all, you need to recognize it for what it is. You need to know that, okay, I'm having a panic attack. And then, like you said, slow down, take deep breaths, and do a lot of, shall I say, self-talk, positive self-talk. Okay, um, you know, you need to calm down and all that. But you cannot assume that all palpitations are a panic attack until you've seen a doctor and has checked your heart and has told you, okay, your heart is fine. So this palpitation is probably due to something else. Mm. Okay, so you, a, a panic attack is almost like an exclusion diagnosis. Yeah. you've excluded everything, mm. you know, and then you now realize, okay, because there's no test for panic attack. Yeah. You can't go to a lab and do a blood test and the blood test comes out and says, oh, <laughs> your diagnosis is panic yeah. attack. Yeah. So you would have, you know, seen the doctors, you would have removed all other organic causes mm. before we now decide, okay, you're having a panic attack. And then when that happens, like you said, slow down, take deep breaths and, you know, do a lot of self-talk. Okay, I'm fine. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm just having a panic attack and that should help. And then when panic attacks are too frequent, sometimes you may need to seek professional help no. because for some reason in this country, or this part of the world, we think only crazy people mm. see mental health physicians, but that's not true. That's another topic <laughs> entirely. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've, we've probably discussed that a lot of times, mm -hmm. mental health. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so... Fair, fair. Okay. I think we have so many other questions. All right. But then we'll take a short break. And when we come back, we'll continue with the conversation. See you shortly. Welcome back. If you just joined us. We are still discussing lifestyle changes for a healthy heart with Dr. Monisola Adanijo. Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 You could also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. So, Dr. Adanijo, I was going to ask, these days we have um, people using a lot of supplements and intravenous yeah <laughs> what, what effects do those things have do they have any negative effects on the heart okay first of all we, we need to understand that supplements don't really treat anything they supplement okay. exactly just, just what the name, as what the name, the name implies. Is. so 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 you can't say you're using the supplement to treat hypertension for example or heart disease mm. so let's mm. get that out there now when you're putting anything into your vein it cannot be safe. Right. It cannot be safe. And many of these therapies are not done in hospitals. I saw a picture of some IV therapy done in a bar, as in bar, a regular bar with, mm. uh, yes. So they're not safe. They're done, many of them are done by, you know, people who are not doctors in non-medical, you know, s settings and things like that. Now, if you're putting anything directly into your vein, it's going to your heart directly. There's mm. a danger of allergic reactions, anaphylaxis, and even death. And many of these things that people are injecting for weight loss or for beauty or for glow <laughs> or whatever <laughs> can be achieved by eating properly. properly yeah. So you don't really need that IV shot, to be honest. If you just change your diet. It's so, it's so simple, and they cost so much, and, and there's the potential of causing, you know, more injury because even in hospital when you're giving any anybody anything IV, you know behind your mind that this person could react to it mm. there could be reactions there could be complications so everybody is careful so you can't just take you know an IV supplement just because that, yeah. it's not safe okay i think i also have one question for the older generation you know i, I mean as you get older um, certain things creep up on you what would you say, would we still stick to diet and being active? Would that be the only thing you say is... To prevent heart disease? Yeah. Okay, so 80% of people that um, pass on from heart disease could have been saved if only they practice preventive medicine. Okay? So preventive medicine, like you said, is activity and what you consume. Now, regardless of how old you are, you're not too old to exercise. 
Now, yeah. people always think exercise is this big thing that you have to carry one big mm. load or anything. Just be active. Don't just sit down on your chair and send all your grandchildren around, you know, <laughs> as in someone, someone taking off your shoes, somebody else is bringing your food. Get up, you know, and move around your house. That alone is exercise. Now, apart from the heart, exercise is really good for other things. Like in older women, the older you get, you lose bone density, you lose muscle mass and things like that. When you exercise, you prevent that. Mm. Okay, yes, exercise improves mental function. So it reduces the risk of dementia when you're mm. old. So you can't just say, oh, I'm old, and then just sit down in one place. And then, so no matter how old you are, you still need to be active and you still need to eat properly. Mm. Okay, so what are the major um, lifestyle habits that you would say are bad for the heart? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like coming from what is bad, bad but, yeah. but since you asked that question, first of all, toxins, and that's really common among young people these days. Mm. Toxins include alcohol, mm. includes anything you smoke. Yeah. So whether it's shisha, whether it's vaping, whether <laughs> you're smiling, anything that emits smoke yeah. is bad for your heart. Okay. So I said alcohol, I said anything you smoke, some medications that are not necessary, skin bleaching, some things people use oh, really? for, yes, because when you rub those creams into your body, it doesn't Reacts. just disappear, it mm. enters your bloodstream, bloodstream and yeah. these are steroids, steroid cream, some creams contain mercury yeah. and they enter your system and damage your organs, kidneys, hearts and things like that. Wow. Yes. So, um, sedentary lifestyle is harmful. So you can't just sit down in one place like a big boy, you know, you don't walk anywhere. These days is a flex. I don't walk anywhere. I ride my car anywhere I'm going. Mm. Sorry, but you're predisposing yourself to heart disease and mm. obesity. Obesity is also a problem. Now, people, for some reason, think when you have arrived or when you've made so much money, the next thing is now to start expanding in all directions. <laughs> now, abdominal fat. <laughs> what, a, what a way to put it. So <laughs> abdominal fat expanding you know, in all areas. A risk factor for heart disease. When you have mm. a pot belly, that's a risk factor for heart disease. Okay. What else is bad? All the beer drinkers. You see, beer, beer is a whole is part of the toxins, alcohol. Mm. Now, what you consume, packet food, these days, you know, I'm also kind of guilty sometimes. We tend not to cook anymore. Mm -hmm. Everybody's on the move. So we are, yes. we are all on our apps or doing yeah, something. Yeah. I remember when I was much younger, you know, when we were growing up in the 80s, there was no fast food. I think the first, um, the first fast food place was, I think, was Chicken George. And that was in like 1983 or so. Mm -hmm. Then Mr. Biggs came and there was this big explosion. Because then everybody was slimmer. If you look at your no, parents' actually, pictures, yeah. everybody you was slimmer. You barely saw and those days, was there, I used to <laughs> beg my mom to want to take fast food. To exactly. So, like, so, please let me not take cooked food. Then, exactly. Let me buy food. So, what's the issue with fast food? It's salty. <laughs> has a lot of Excellent. fat okay now it's salty because they have to make it tasty mm. so there's msg there's salt and things like that and then there's fat because fat makes food taste better that's the truth so there's lots of fats you know and things like that and things are fried double fried deep fried <laughs> refried refried fries and things like that so <laughs> so that's also bad okay so basically that's it and they're not eat, drinking enough water people don't drink enough water I'm guilty of that. Yes, you need to, because in Nigeria especially, it's really hot, hot we're sweating. Yeah, today was a days. horrible oh day. Actually, I think really I had, hot today. I think I had a heat day. stroke today. I because after a while, you know, I, mm -hmm. I felt like I was going to pass out. You need to take, in Nigeria, hot, humid environment, at least three liters of water every day, minimum. Because you're sweating. Three liters, Mary. I'm sure you didn't even go up to one liter. <laughs> That's the point. I really, I really, really struggle with it. I don't know how I can function. I, I, I honestly don't understand. My mom, mm -hmm. you know, she has tried a possible. I drink water like a bird. I could probably drink one bottle of water. Something and keep you can it. do for people like you. Yes. You can, you can put your fruit into water. Yeah, and make it flavored. And make it flavored. Not pack flavored. No, of course. As in, just course. cut some fruit into it and make it infused taste nicer. With, yeah. Yes, infused water. Yeah, that, that's what I, that's that what can I help. do. Because for me, I don't drink a lot of water either. Mm. If I'm, as a matter of fact, sometimes if I'm not eating, I'm not drinking water. Mm. I barely ever get so thirsty, except mm. maybe I've been in the sun or I've been out or I've been busy or mm -hmm. up and down ahead, then I want to drink water. Mm. If not, you barely ever hear me say, oh, 
I want to have water, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But I figured that, okay, if I put maybe lemon in my water or pineapples exactly. or apples, mm -hmm. it's, because it it's more nice. interesting for me, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm now gingered to drink the water. So you, you, you should probably try But then that. you, I think another um, thing for me is you, you would have to use the bathroom so frequently. <laughs> frequently. Which is, is good for your kidneys, actually. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's the <laughs> Yeah, it can be it can be you know very inconveniencing. Oh, wow. but um, I also have one more question mm -hmm. concerning alcohol. I mean, there's the famous myth about um, red wine. Red and wine, the heart. yeah, the heart. You see, yes. if I had a dollar for every time someone asked <laughs> that question, question, I'll be the world's richest woman. <laughs> so, red wine and the heart. Yes, it's a slippery slope. Mm. Okay. So first of all, red wine contains alcohol. Yes. And the alcohol content of red wine varies from 10 to 20%, depending mm -hmm. on the kind of alcohol that yeah, you buy. Yeah. Now, the percentage is how, how alcoholic the red wine is. Mm -hmm. Now, the red wine is made from grapes, red grapes. And yes. these contain some kind of chemicals that are good for the heart. Uh. But you need to look at how much red wine are you allowed per day. Sick. Now, the daily intake of red wine is 120 mils. To put that into context, since we're in Lagos or in Nigeria, yeah. a sachet of pure water is 500 mils. <laughs> Half of that is 250. Oh my days. So you see that regular wine glass, <laughs> like half oh or like goodness. a third yeah. is what you are allowed yeah. every day. Wow. Because it has alcohol, you cannot say, oh, because red wine is good for you, you want to finish a bottle. Mm. That's taking too much alcohol. You're shaking <laughs> tables now. That's and there, <laughs> well, there are better ways to take care of your heart than drinking red wine. Have you exercised? Have you stopped smoking? Mm. Have you changed your mental diet? Who mm. do you hang around? Are you sleeping properly? Mm. That's another thing that is Sweet. bad. If you don't sleep, are you always stressed? Sweet. Are you consuming sugar? Right. Because sugar is a whole different kind of toxin. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's as toxic as alcohol and all those other things. So, are you have you eliminated all those things? Are you exercising and all that? So, drinking red wine because it's good for the heart is really just an excuse to drink alcohol. <laughs> okay, so talking about sugar, I was also going to ask about dark chocolates because the same way they talk about red wine, mm -hmm. they also talk about dark chocolate. Right. So, what is it about? So dark, dark chocolate. chocolate is actually good for you. Mm. It has some compounds that are heart friendly. Now, the darker the chocolate, like the more cocoa soil is in your chocolate, the better it is for you. Mm. So that's why dark chocolate is better than milk chocolate mm. and is way better than white, white chocolate because white chocolate is really not chocolate. It's just cocoa butter. That's a different, different story entirely. Now, dark chocolate, because it's chocolate and it has some sugar and it is well, it's bitter, but it could have been more bitter if they didn't put a bit of sugar, sugar in it. So it still has sugar. So you cannot take a whole Chunk. bar <laughs> of, of um, dark chocolate, for example, and say you're taking care of your heart. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So you need to take, you know, it comes in those little Everything squares. Yeah. Maybe just one or two squares, mm. max three, and that's it. So you cannot just eat everything and say, oh, that's I'm taking much. care of my heart. Yeah. So you need to be careful about that. I, I hope we heard that. So... This myth about red wine and dark chocolate, I think if I hear Dr. Dan Joel, it's all in the proper proportions, Quantity. right? Or Which is really sugar. tiny. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really, really tiny, okay, you so, know. Uh, recently, I've had it, about two, three people now. And if when we go back, or rather when I go back to look at it and I try to find out who these people really are, what their lifestyle was, I find out that most of them have been CEOs of sometimes multinationals or, you know, very large companies in Nigeria mm -hmm. or, in, or even globally. Right, and then you hear that oh, this man just slept and he didn't wake up, or yeah, you hear that he was walking slumped, out and he just slumped, and you attacks. know things like that. What what's what's that? Okay, so like I said earlier, heart disease has no symptoms many times, hmm. and many times they're usually precursors. So most people that have heart disease either have had hypertension, or right. they've had high cholesterol, or they've been diabetic. They've had you know all these things, and many times they go unnoticed. Mm. Now, sometimes, even when they go noticed, like, you know, you, you go to hospital, you do your blood pressure, sometimes you have no symptoms, no matter how high your blood pressure is, you're fine, there's no pain, there's no blood, and most of the time, it's pain and blood that get people to move, you know, to, to get help. Now, many of these CEOs, they're type A people, they're stressed, they're not sleeping, they're under a lot of work stress, right. personal stress, and things like that. They are mostly sedentary, so many of them are obese. They have, you know, these abdominal fats that makes them look like they've arrived. Many of them, because they're stressed, 
they need outlets, you know, to relieve their stress. Many of them smoke, many of them drink, many of them eat fast food, think about after work, drink and assume with the boys and things like that. Mm. They do that a lot. Even when they go and play golf, oh. after golf, they sit <laughs> on the table <laughs> with whiskey <laughs> and things like that. So they're yeah. indulging a lot mm. and they're not exercising, they're not doing all that. And then because they are otherwise well, they tend to ignore their health, mm. you know. Now, because these sorts of people are my clients, Many times you call them, Mr. Blah, 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 you have a clinic appointment. Oh, I'm in Madrid. Oh, I'm in London. Mm. Oh, I'm in Abuja. Mm. Oh, I'm meeting with this or that. So they tend to neglect their health, even though they can afford to take care of themselves. Right. And then heart disease strikes without warning. So maybe they are given a presentation, then they slump because they have a stroke or a massive heart attack or things like that. It's unfortunate, but really, we really need to take better care of ourselves. Interesting. Huh, that's actually because I I didn't see it in that. I mean, I on I when I thought about it, I'm like, okay, I can understand that they've probably been going through a lot of stress, a lot of sleepless nights because they have presentations of bumping. But then I like what you said about neglecting their health, right? Um, see, your health is very important. You can't afford to neglect it and say, oh, because there's some business meeting or there's something that you need to attend to. You also need to prioritize your health. And you've heard that right from the cardiologist herself. Dr. Dandre, I'm going to also ask, um, what is the most bizarre case of a heart, what would I say, yeah, of a heart disease that you've, you've experienced? Hmm. Bizarre as in presentation or bizarre as in define bizarre because I've seen all sorts. <laughs> So what do you mean by bizarre? Well, I don't the want, the I don't one that, that shocked you, that, you know, mm. took you by surprise, you know, something. Okay, so, so, so it must have been hmm, bizarre. Okay, so it must have been when I was training, um, when I was a resident. So okay. there are different types of heart disease. And most of it, there are some heart diseases that you're born with. Yeah. Mm. And some heart diseases that you develop as you grow older. Now, because I'm an adult doctor, we tend not to see too many sure. congenital heart diseases, diseases that you're born with. Now, so when I was in Luth, I trained in Luth. So this man walked in. He was quite well, you know, mm. six foot tall, otherwise healthy. And then he had some vague symptoms. So I said, okay, let's do an echo now. An echocardiogram is like a heart scan where you scan the heart and you look at the heart and see how it's functioning. You measure the walls and things like that. So from your rudimentary biology, you know that the heart has four chambers, mm -hmm. the, you know, two up, two down. Mm -hmm. And you need all four chambers to function. Mm -hmm. So I echoed this guy and he had just three. Oh, wow. And he was otherwise well. That was really strange. Now this is the kind of person that you enter a fight with in the bus. Mm. And, and then you keep him on. That's and it. then the man will pass over. Then they'll be like, ah, they use jazz. They killed somebody. You know, they killed somebody. <laughs> or, you know, is the neighbor that eyed him somehow. So many people are walking around with all kinds of diseases. Mm. So I always tell people, I tell my friends, I tell my children, don't fight in public. Because mm -hmm. you never know what's on that people's shirts. Yes. And just headbutt somebody or just thump the person's chest and the person just goes and then yeah. you'll be like i didn't do anything <laughs> yes yeah, that's at what point do you think one should be worried to maybe for example if i feel like is there anything like your heart's racing really fast and you're like, oh, it's like this is abnormal maybe i should go to the hospital to check it out to be honest, you see, heart disease kind of sneaks up on you. <laughs> yeah. By the time you're having symptoms, then there's already a problem. So although people kind of don't like going to hospital when they are not ill, I would advocate you go for your annual medical from as young as 20. Now, why 20? Mm. Because people always say, oh, but I'm too young. I've had people in my DM telling me, oh, I'm just 24. I cannot have heart disease. My youngest hypertension patient came to me when he was 16. Really? So, you know, and then because of our lifestyle, I just said yeah. it now, we're smoking everything smokable. We're drinking everything drinkable. We're snorting everything snortable. Every, everybody's fat. You know, nobody walks anymore. So the risk factors of heart disease are present in a lot of young people. So before, the average age of hypertension was 45, mm -hmm. 50. You know, your parents' age Yes. Mates. These days, most of my patients are in their 30s. Wow. Or 20s, late 20s. 
So mm. we need to, don't wait to get a symptom. Just go for your annual medical. And then don't assume any symptom is just a little symptom. Mm. So if your heart starts to race or you're out of breath or you have any form of chest pain or, you know, you can't breathe properly, you need to see your doctor. It may just be a heart condition. You just answered my next question, actually, because <laughs> I was going to ask, so how often do, should we actually check our hearts? Every year. Mm. So if it's should... normal, every year. Right. So at the point where, I want to believe that as a cardiologist, at the point where you have diagnosed a patient or a heart disease or whatever, then you're now giving, um, not precautionary, you're now giving treatment, treatment right? Okay, it's been quite an interesting conversation. Marie, do you have any other questions? Um, I think I, I don't know if it's a question, but it's something about sleep because mm. I, I think um, some, sometimes we're not even having a good night rest. I mean, we might, you can sleep the amount of hours, but then, you know, it's so not, rest you, you're not resting, you know, because I, I, I realized for myself that I'm sleeping, but I, I, like I wake up in a jerk and I used to do this thing where I, I turn off my screen time so no matter the time I wake up I can't open it to you know but over time I've just let it go so I just mostly I'm waking up I'm checking my phone like what are you looking for is something you know pursuing you I don't know if mm. probably something is going on mentally you mm. know that I'm not able to settle you know so how maybe I should ask how can we get proper rest you know because mm. it's not even I don't know if it's about the amount of hours <laughs> anymore. <laughs> yeah, because if you, you can have three hours of a good rest, mm -hmm. you can have six hours of a nice rest, rest, yes, and you are just, you know, toughing and tumbling. Okay, so I think, first of all, it's inten being intentional intention with about sleep. it. Like you said, screen time. You think our phones are a big distraction. Mm, distraction. Yeah, For some yeah. reason, we kind of think that something is going to happen to us if you don't check your phone immediately, you wake up. Now, you need to be intentional about that. You need to have a nighttime routine. I know it sounds like an old woman thing. <laughs> you, know, you, know, it, you need to have a time where you turn off your phone and it should be at least two hours before you go to sleep. Huh. So you cannot be texting <laughs> right when you're trying to sleep. You will not sleep. Yeah. But sometimes you know. that's what puts you to bed. <laughs> that's not true. Tech looking at your phone or listening to your phone. They're two different uh, things. Right. True. Not you looking at your phone. Sure. Sometimes I use yeah. white noises and Exactly. All and and they're not always on your phone. Sometimes, although we've all forgotten what CDs look like and CD players and things <laughs> like that. Do they still exist? Exactly. <laughs> so so you need to be intentional about turning off screen time because mm. when light shines into your eyes, your brain thinks it's still daytime mm. and it keeps you awake. Mm. Right. Oh. So you need to turn off your phones at least an hour to two hours before you and go to bed. And turn off the lights. I've been sleeping and with turn the lights off. The light. So since I can sleep with it, uh -huh. I'm like, you know, yeah, okay. and then I make sure your room is too as far cool as you can possible. make it. This is we all know this is Lagos. The heat is painful. It's a lot. As cool as you can make it. Have a shower before bed. Try not to eat too close to when you want to sleep mm. so that the food can digest quickly and you don't have indigestion. When you wake up in the middle of the night, resist the urge to carry your phone. I actually know people that lock their phones in, in another room when mm. they want to sleep so that they won't have the urge to go and get the phone. Alarm. Yeah, that happens. So if I'm I, so scared I will miss the alarm <laughs> to wake up. No, 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 no. The minute I pick up my phone, mm. trust me, I'm awake for the next one hour. Exactly. I'm awake for the Look, next I'm hour. I'm so anxious. So I, I'm to be at the gym for 6 a.m. My alarm is for 5 a.m. The anxiety between I've woken up at five, I have another one for five ten, mm. which is okay. Get ready, girl. That's just like me as well. <laughs> That's just like me as well. You know, five ten eh. comes, and then there's another one by five ten. So, girl, you're running five forty. Yes, so you don't need to exactly. Leave that. I have also have three I, I, alarms on I my phone. I keep thinking mm. that this is because my anxiety of late has been really high, and I'm like, I think I need to, you know, you work, need to work on, on that. Anxiety. Yes, because you need to work on that. It's, it's not, very important. It's, it's not healthy. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kajan, just, um, just to round off the conversation, you said something about um, diagnosing a 16-year-old, mm -hmm. right? Uh, someone as young as 16. Mm -hmm. It's a heart disease manageable. Is it fatal? Okay, no, not always. Now, there are mm. different types of heart disease. So, heart disease is not one thing. There are yeah. different sorts of heart disease. Mm. Now, having heart disease doesn't automat automatically mean that you're going to die next week. <laughs> oh, although it's best prevented. Yeah. Um, so, when you have heart disease, okay, you've seen your doctor, they've told you you have heart disease. They can offer you treatment. Now, treatment of heart disease is generally three ways. 
Okay. First of all, there's a lifestyle component. Obviously, you need to stop doing all the things that can predispose you to worsening your heart disease in the first place. So stop alcohol, stop cigarettes, start exercising, eat better, and things like that. The next thing is medication. Now, many people have issues with taking medication for health. Mm. But I find that these same people take medication for glow. Mm. But that's another topic entirely. That's on that table. So you need to use your medication, okay? And then the third option is surgery. Now, if you've been told that you need surgery for whatever reason, or you've been told you need medication, you need to t take your medication. And you need to see your doctor regularly. Now, it's okay to ask for a second opinion. So let's say you come and see me, and I tell you you need to do a procedure. Yeah. Maybe you're like, this girl is too fine. She can't know what she's saying. <laughs> so you go, go and see another cardiologist. That's fine. Yeah. But as long as especially two or more specialists have told you okay. that this is your condition and this is the treatment you need to undergo, it is well does not cure disease. It's yeah. not my portion does not treat illness. <laughs> You know, absolutely. You need to that's our way in, like, in follow, this part of the world. Follow your doctor's advice mm. and do what you need to do. If you need surgery, try and get it. If you can afford it, raise funds, blah blah blah. If you need medication, please swallow it as the doctor prescribed, right. mm. and then do your lifestyle changes. Everything. Yeah, works I think together. I think lifestyle change is <laughs> Very really important. the take home. Yes. You know, and for us young people, I think the earlier the better we mm -hmm. start. You know. And intentionality, yes. I like that as well. Being mm -hmm. very intentional. Oh, Dr. Dan, it's been a pleasure having you on. The a real been pleasure. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I really Thank you so it. much, Mary, as well. Thank you. Thank you. My dear lady for tonight. Thank you, Chinelo. <laughs> uh, Derek Anchor. <laughs> All right, so before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our social media engagement. Remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us. If you missed today's quote, here it is again. The most deadly disease truly is the failure of the heart, and this is by Oscar Arias. See you tomorrow at 8 p.m. It might not be me, but we're going to bring another great conversation to your screen again. Good night. Bye.